as I'm concerned. Yeah, a lot of teachers and parents very fired up about NAPLAN testing. Dr Les Perlman joins us now from the US. Les, thank you. Good morning to you. Good morning. Now, you were hired by the New South Wales Teachers Federation specifically to look at NAPLAN testing. In terms of the result, is it a good or a bad test? It's one of the worst I've ever seen. Wow. Um, it really doesn't test the m most important skills of writing. It tests only low-level skills in the writing part, even though that those same skills like spelling and grammar are also tested in earlier parts. And it doesn't test the most important parts of writing like argumentation, development, audience awareness are just ignored. So is it making students worse or is it improving the, the system to actually work out where they are standing? Yeah, it's making students worse writers. That what happens because it's on tested, schools have to teach to the test. And I think you can argue very easily that the reason why Australia's ranking in writing on PISA and other international tests has declined is partially at least due to the NAPLAN. Wow, that's so concerning. Now, we did reach out to the group that sets the NAPLAN test, the ACAARA, and they responded. They've said that NAPLAN assesses the key features of good writing, a student's ability to produce a text that engages and orients this reader, and it has a logical and a coherent structure, expresses ideas, and uses vocabulary relevant to the topic. Clear as mud, really. What do you make of that statement? That's probably part of the problem. Yeah, well, I th it's part of the problem, but it's also, I would disagree with most of the statement. Um, it doesn't, vocabulary part of the product, product is, uh, is not true. It really wants vocabulary from a set spelling list. Mm -hmm. So you've looked at s similar tests that occur in other countries. What should Australia be doing with NAPLAN? Should we try and tailor it somehow, improve it or scrap it altogether? I really think Australia should improve it. They should work towards a new NAPLAN. And the first thing they should do is not use outside experts like me. Really? But you might, you're putting yourself out of a job here, Lex. I know. I, well, I'm old enough that I can do that. <laughs> um, part of the reason is Australia can do... Aust Australia produces great tests. The your year 12 tests are among the best in the world. Um, the English is a foreign language test that's produced in Australia along with Cambridge University is the best English as a foreign language test um, in the world. And if you get this key stakeholders, teachers, educators, and parents possibly, writers, journalists such as yourselves, all in a room and make a transparent development of, of the, uh, you'll create a great test. Part of the problem with NAPLAN is it's a black box. There's mm -hmm. no transparency. No one knows how it was developed. And is it important to actually have tests like this to get a gauge of where students sit? I would say it's important, but not as often as NAPLAN does it. Mm -hmm. I would argue that you should test less, but test better. Mm. Well, it's important information to take on as kids are about to embark on the new NAPLAN testing as well. Les, thank you. Always good to get your insights. Thank you very much. Carl. Yeah, he's an interesting man, that's for sure. Mm -hmm.